Welcome everybody, bienvenidos. We'll start the whole thing in Espanol. Yeah? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, my name is Paula Messina. I may have met a few of you uh, before when we did info sessions. I work for AIFS Study Abroad, the little symbol up there on the right. Welcome parents. I came to study abroad just like the students when I was a, oh, I chose the college I chose because during the welcome and the college tours, they talked a lot about study abroad. I was the kind of kid that would never even do sleepovers. I would call my parents at like 11 and say, please, somebody come pick me up. I can't stay here overnight. But when I was ready for study abroad, I was ready, right? I was gone. So I came to you guys just like, uh, to study abroad just like you as a student. I went abroad to Spain with AIFS. That college was affiliated with AIFS. I went abroad to Spain for a year. Came back, decided it, it changed everything about me. It made me more confident. It made me more independent. Um, you know, I, I suddenly realized I could manage in the world away from my parents and my home and my comfort zone, and I would be okay. And the decisions I made were, were good ones. So that was, it was a really, really transformative experience. It changed my personality completely. Um, and we want that Costa Rica to be the same for you guys, and we're confident that it will be. Um, after I came back from college and finished, I went back and I worked for AIFS in the Granada, Spain, where I had done my study abroad. So I have experience being a student. I have experience being on-site staff and working with students on a daily basis and with faculty, making sure that their experience was a healthy and safe one. And then uh, two years ago, my son was a student on this program. Unfortunately, he's working today. He would have been here to tell you a little bit about it. But I've been a study abroad parent too, right? I sent my 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 kid on this program two years ago. And even though I did the orientation meeting and I know the staff in Costa Rica really, really well, it was still, I had moments when he was gone that I felt like I couldn't breathe, right? There was that little bit heartbeat of anxiety. I haven't heard from him today. He has not posted any pictures. Is he okay? No news is good news, Paula, it's okay. They would call you if it weren't, you know, and I would just talk myself through that little, you know, little anxious moment. He posted no pictures the entire time he was there. He called when he needed money and when his phone was pickpocketed. That was all I heard from him from the entire month, but he was fine. It was transformative for him as well. So um, we're excited to introduce you to your faculty this morning that are gonna tell you a little bit about the academic side of the program. And then um, we'll go into the PowerPoint. We're going to do the itinerary. So we're gonna go through what you'll be doing on departure day, arrivals. We'll be going through um, the uh, daily, you know, where you're living, where, you know, your school is, and then the highlights of the, the big trips. And then we're going to do a, um, roommate slash conflict resolution exercise with you, have you get up, talk to each other, get to know each other a little bit, because you still have a little time to request one another's roommates if you wish. Uh, and then we're going to finish by going over what to pack, how to get ready for this trip, going over um, practical stuff like communication, money, what to pack, what not to pack, because that's important too. Okay, so we have a, a long morning gear up. Um, and we're going to start by your faculty. So, Dr. Miller Thayer, do you want to start, or yeah. Professor Harmon? Beauty before age. So, how are you guys today? Good. Um, okay. So, this is my first time going to Costa Rica. Like I told most of you before, um, even though I've traveled a lot in Europe and I've uh, lived in Mexico and. I've been to uh, Singapore and to Thailand and so many places around the world, but my first time in Costa Rica. So I'll be just like you guys, figuring out the landscape and how everything works there, but I'm sure we'll be fine. You guys will pass, right? Yeah. How many of you are in uh, my class, just so I know? Because there's 14 total, and four of you are honors, and 10 are non-honors, so... Sorry. So, if you're in the honors class, there's three books. If you're in the non-honors class, there's two, okay? But the two that are in common, I'm going to start with first. They have hard copies and ebook copies. I'm going to recommend that you get the ebook because you can download it, and it can be on your tablet or um, laptop, whatever you're bringing. Tablets are a little easier because they're lighter and smaller, um, but 
you can download it. And so there, therefore, it'll be a little easier to take, right, in this big, heavy notebook. <laughs> um, but you're going to need this. And you need to make sure you get the correct edition of this book, um, because this is the third edition. And you'll see I'm an author on here. So you want to make sure that it's the one that has me. And Mask, sorry, there's a lot of people that aren't here. Yeah, sorry. I also have a cold, so okay. I'm a little lower. Anyway, all right, so make sure you get the third edition. Um, and that it has me as the co-author and Katherine Sorensen. Because there's two earlier editions of this book where I'm on there, and it's not going to work for you. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So um, if you're going to order the ebook, I have the ebook information on the handout that I just gave you. So you can go right to the publisher and order it. It's also cheaper, by the way. It's only $56 if you get the ebook. And if you get the hard copy, I think it's $75. Make sense? So you save a little money, get the ebook. <laughs> and then. Um, <laughs> the workbook is the second book that you need. And this also comes in an ebook. It's $28 for the hard copy and it's $20 for the ebook. And if you get the ebook, you have options. You can, um, it has Microsoft Word uh, files that you can fill in so you can type your answers in. And depends on how good our Wi Fi really is, I will make sure that there are Turnitin. Uh, places that you could turn it in online and I could grade it online or you could print out uh, the hard copies of the exercises that you need. You're not going to need all of these. Does that make sense? And I don't have your Canvas website up yet. It'll be up before we leave. I'll talk more about that in a second, but I got to finish this semester first before <laughs> I get ready for winter, just so you know. Um, so, but uh, you'll have the exercises so you can either Get the hard copy and just tear out the ones and bring the ones you need, or you can get the ebook, which will save you about eight dollars, and you could uh, print them. Or if we really have good Wi-Fi, you can just uh, download them and fill them out, type them, type in your answers, and then turn them in electronically. Make sense? Okay. So everybody needs these two books. They're required. Okay. Any questions about that? And if you order the ebook, I have the publisher information on there too. So there's two different links that you need. One for the reader, one for the workbook. Does that make sense? Yeah. The yeah. You still want the third edition or the first edition? Oh, the ebook is only a first edition. The workbook only has a first edition. This is new. For the book itself? The reader, third edition. Okay, and you already got his first edition for the ebook. It says the ebook, first edition for the reader? Yeah. Okay. Change that. That's what I Because I was copying and pasting in. Okay. Now, yeah. So, it's just to be clear, first edition for the workbook, third edition for the reader, no matter what that paper says. So, change it on the paper where it says for the reader, it's always the third edition, even if it's the ebook. It should still be. It's the first time we've had it as an ebook, so I, I don't think they're calling it the first edition. Now I have to go back and look. But it should still say third edition. Does that make sense? Yeah, so make sure that it's, as long as it says Katherine Sorensen is my co-author, you're good. Does that make sense? Because this is the first time I've worked with her on this. Make sense? Thank you for asking. Any other questions? Everyone else? Okay, that clear? Okay. Yeah, if you're in the honors class, there's one more book, and that's this one. It's an ethnography. And it's called, I Won't Stay Indian, I'll Keep Studying, Race, Place, and Discrimination in a Costa Rican High School. It's only available in hard copy this way, and it's about $56, I think. But they have a rental, and they have an ebook. So I highly recommend that you either rent it or get the ebook version of it. Does that make sense? OK? Because then that's cheaper. That's why I was still OK with getting it, because you, can, you have those options. and I. Put that information on the handout for the honors students. If you're not in the honors class, you don't need this book. Does that make sense? Everybody good? Questions? No? OK. So if you are getting the ebook, so everyone in my class, please raise your hand. Everyone needs one of these. This is for the ebook, how to access the exercises. So. Just as we were last class, I was staring at the registry cap. Did you 
just updated, so it should be the semester, so it should be the most accurate <laughs> way to access them. Um, but this is how we get the exercises for Microsoft Word files. Because if you just go into the workbook by itself, um, you'll have PDF files, and those aren't fillable. Does that make sense? Okay, so you want to get the Microsoft Word files, and this is how to do it. It's really pretty straightforward. If you get stuck, I'll be there, <laughs> and I can walk you through it. Make sense? So far, so good? Okay. So there's that. Um, you also will need a journal of some type, but I leave that up to you however you would like to. Um, yeah, it could be a notebook, it could be a little journal book. Yeah, whatever you want. Um, but I'm going to be checking it and stamping it while we're there. And you're going to take notes daily in it. And then you're going to relate that back. And weekly, you're going to post a journal online if we have internet. If not, then we'll figure that out there. <laughs> Makes sense? Jennifer, I'm sorry. I have to ask you to come back and talk in the. Sorry. John's okay with that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so one last time, I'll just repeat that really quickly so that they can hear it on here. Um, so you need a journal, and it can be a notebook, it could be a small journal, it could be whatever you like, but it has to be a handwritten one that I can check every day and just stamp. Does that make sense? And then you'll be, I'll tell you more about what to write in it um, when we get closer. But this will be something that I hope also you'll get to keep later and you'll be able to reflect back on it. So it'll be kind of a nice keepsake for you too, in addition to getting your work done, right? Um, and then you're gonna use that to write a journal every week um, that will post online, that I'll grade uh, more than just stamping. <laughs> Does that make sense? Okay, and we'll tie that back. And then um, the other thing that we need to do is we have two classes that are gonna get, um, because our class time is in the afternoon, so two days while we're there that we're supposed to have class are gonna be field trips, and we need to make that time up. And I was already gonna have one class time, one meeting before we left, so I'd like to do two, if you guys can do that. Um, that week before we leave is actually the beginning of winter intercession. So, um, and I figured two, three hours would be better than one six hour, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so would you like to do Tuesday, Thursday of that week or Tuesday, Wednesday of that week? What would work best for most of you? It's just the next day. Would yeah. you like, so Tuesday, Wednesday, does that work for everybody? Yes? Okay, so I don't have a room for us yet because I wanted to check with you first. Everyone good with that? Okay, so we'll do Tuesday, Wednesday, that first week in January. I will post dates and I'll get us a room and I'll tell you where to meet and everything like that. Now the next question I have for you, would you like it to be like 10 to 1 or 1 to 4? 10 to 1. 10 to 1. <laughs> yeah. I won't be here. You won't be here? Okay, I will have an option for you um, if you can't be here. Don't worry. It's not as good as being here, but it's okay. It'll be fine. I knew some might not be able to. Does that make sense? Don't stress about it. It'll be okay. I promise. You're in good hands. By the way, so um, one of the things that I don't think I shared with anyone in here yet, unless you've had me before, is I have a hearing loss. Um, and I wear hearing aids, and it's in the speech range. So I can hear below and above the speech range just fine, but in the speech range, sounds drop out for me. So sometimes when you're talking to me, it sounds like wah, 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 you know, like the Charlie Brown adults. <laughs> and so I know you said something to me, but I cannot tell what you said to me. Does that make sense? So if I tell you I can't hear you or to repeat it, or I do something like this, it means I didn't hear you. So I'm gonna ask you to repeat things occasionally and sometimes what happens is I might, if I've asked you to repeat it twice and I still can't catch it, I'm going to turn to someone near you and ask them to repeat it because different people have different tonal ranges in their voices. And sometimes I can pick up something from one person that I can't hear from another. Does that make sense, right? But don't take it personally. It's me, not you. <laughs> and I've had this uh, hearing loss for decades. And sometimes it means I also mishear things. And my brain does an automatic response where it assumes it knows what you're going to say based on the context of our discussion. And so sometimes it guesses wrong. 
So if I see you, for instance, and I think you're saying, how are you doing? But you actually ask me what I was doing, and I answer, I'm fine. Clearly not the right answer. <laughs> Feel free to laugh, because I will. It's OK. <laughs> um, but also, just tell me. Say, no, you misheard me. Or give me a second, because sometimes I'm just a beat behind my brain's processing, and it'll figure out that I heard you wrong. And I'll be like, oh, sorry about that. Yeah, no, this is what I'm doing. Does that make sense, right? So don't feel shy about saying, what? That doesn't make sense. Or no, that's not what I asked you, right? You follow? OK. So, um, so you need a journal. You need the books. I'm going to have some handouts for you that I will give to you on that first class meeting. Um, and if you're not able to make the class meeting, I'll post them on Canvas, and you can just print them out, so you'll be fine. Or you could just make arrangements to see me ahead of time. Um, but I'm going to give you term lists to take with you. And because they will be on Canvas, um, you'll have an electronic version. But I think it's best to have a hard copy just in case anything happens. You know, I keep saying, like, we're supposed to have internet. It's just I've traveled enough to know, first of all, internet, even here, right, goes out and doesn't always work. And then secondly, it's not always what you anticipate. So you might have like 5G here or 2G here, and we may not have that there. So we might have internet or Wi-Fi, but it's really only good for email. <laughs> I've had that happen too. So I'm just preparing for the just-in-case worst scenario. Make sense? Right? Which is always good. Just be prepared, have your plan in place, but don't freak out when things don't go as planned. Because I can already tell you, I don't know what's going to go wrong, but things will go wrong. It's just the nature of the process, right? And you're going to experience culture shock, and you'll know more about that from my class, too. We'll talk about it. But don't stress about that, either. It's normal, and I will get you through it. And I've had it many times. I have managed to survive. Well, I'll be OK, I promise. And let me just check my notes to make sure I'm not forgetting something here. Um, Hmm. Oh, before we leave, too, um, I'm going to have you do a bio assignment. It's going to be that first week, so you don't have to be in class with me that day to be able to do it. You're going to post it on Canvas. And it's just a way for us to all get to know each other a little bit, and I'll post my bio, too. Um, and I'll get points for that, um, but that will help. And us meeting before we leave is also going to help you get to know each other better, too. So it'll help kind of help you pick roommates and help you figure things out like that and who do you get along with. And it'll help you start to build the friendships that you're going to build before you even get there. Because trust me, you guys are going to make lifelong friends here. I mean, I have a friend that I made when I traveled in Europe. And she happens to live on the East Coast in New Jersey. And we met in Budapest, Hungary. Like, I don't know, it was in 96. So how long ago was that? Yeah, and we're still friends. <laughs> so you will meet people on this, this program and this trip that you will be friends with for the rest of your life, pretty much. So, um, and that'll start for us. And what I'll do is I'll post things and I'll send you. Uh, they'll go as announcements, and then they'll also go into emails. And I'll send you some emails before the class is visible. And I have to publish the class to send those emails. So if you see the class and then it disappears, don't panic. It's because I'm working on it still. And I just opened it to send you an email. <laughs> Does that make sense? Because it's the only way I can do that for our class. So I think that's everything I wanted to cover with you. Do you guys have any questions about anything? No? OK. So I'll be posting some things that you'll be able to access, hopefully, before we go. And you can print things if you want to, or you can download them. I highly recommend that you download them to whatever uh, device you're going to be using. And then that way you have it. And you don't, you're not relying on Wi-Fi or anything else like that. Just exactly, just electricity. Yeah. Um, when, as far as the class going up on Canvas, when should we start to look for that? Because I know you say you got to finish I would say course. after Christmas. After Christmas? <laughs> Yeah. I just want to know how long I can go without thinking about school at all. Before oh, yeah. Don't, as, if you check that first, <laughs> that, that end of December, first week in January, okay. you'll be fine. Awesome. I mean, if you want to get started ahead of time, yeah, I'm not going to have your <laughs> syllabus ready because I have to adjust some things because um, I'm taking some things out and adding some things in and changing okay. some stuff around. 
uh, to kind of match our itinerary more. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, um, so I know what you're learning. I just don't have it structured for you yet. Okay. Does that cool. make sense? But once it, once the modules are ready, or even if I get the first module ready and the syllabus, I might make that visible, and then I can open the class for you. Okay. If so, for those of you who want to start looking early, you can. But don't worry, you'll have plenty of time if you just check like the end of December, or beginning of January. Awesome. You'll be fine. Okay, and you can always email me. I check my email pretty regularly. I won't be doing that right after grades are due, which is the Tuesday after finals. Next week is finals week. My grades are due at 8 a.m. on Tuesday. We'll see if I make it. And um, <laughs> Tuesday they will be in for sure. And then after that, I need a couple of days off because just so you know, I also just moved. So I am living out of boxes, can't cook in my kitchen yet. I don't know where half my stuff is. So that's why I was a couple minutes late this morning because I was looking for a toothbrush because my son was in one bathroom and I didn't have a toothbrush in the other. And I was like, and I knew where it was, but I had to move some boxes to get to them. So yeah, it's an adventure right now at my house too. So I'll be working on unpacking a little bit and then I'll be dealing with our class. But no worries, we're gonna have fun. Everything will be in place before we leave, I promise. Yeah. I don't know if this applies to a certain topic of questions, but in general, I just wanna know about the food and drinks out there. I was told you can't really drink the ice, or take you know, anything with ice or water. Uh, we're gonna cover that some more later. Um, and I'm not sure about um, the water quality there, but I can tell you from my experience living in Mexico, yeah. You're not supposed to drink the tap water. You could like brush your teeth with it and take a shower with it. And if you get a little, it's fine, but you didn't want to drink it. So you had to drink bottled water. And they would recommend not getting ice because you don't know if the ice was made with the tap water or not. So um, I'm not sure if that's going to be the case in Costa Rica. I'm sure we'll find out more about that later in the presentation today. Um, so those are kinds of things. You also have to be careful sometimes with um, salads for that reason, if they wash the lettuce in the water. So it depends. Um, but we'll find out more about that in a little bit. Okay, makes sense. All right, I will turn it over to your other professor then. Well, she's impressive. She's amazing, I tell you. Um, okay, let's do the uh, walking jogging class. My name is Steve Hartman. I'll be teaching the walking jogging and the health and wellness. So let's start with the walking jogging class before you guys walk on out of here. Um, anybody in the walking jogging, could you pass these out then while I'm talking to anybody? And, and if you're considering it, take one. Okay. So here's the syllabus for walking jogging. Um, <clears throat> and I'm not going to go over the course description and the learning outcomes. You can read over that. Any health needs. If you have any medical condition I need to know about. If you have asthma or you had uh, a knee surgery or something like that, please let me know about your situation so I don't, you know, have you doing something uh, that is contraindicated the doctor doesn't want you to do. Um, or if you're diabetic, you know, that kind of situation. Um, I, I, I need to know that. Uh, you can read about the attire and the um, the clothing and so on. Um, one thing I would say, make sure you have a good pair of walking, jogging tennis shoes. Soft sole shoes with a good arch support, uh, preferably a little um, water resistant. Um, it, if it rains, um, it depends on how, you know, it depends on what's rain. You know, I won't get into all that. But anyway, if it's drizzling, if it's really a light drizzle, we're still going to walk and jog, okay? If it's raining pretty hard consistently to where we're going to be out there for 30 or 40 minutes and you're going to be drenched and, and you know, not real healthy or likely to slip on something, um, then we'll probably not exercise out on the, the trail, but we will um, still meet. We'll always meet. And if we can't go for a walk jog, We'll meet and we'll talk about things on the study guide and and uh, um, exercise in a classroom if we can or whatever we have at the uh, at the at the uh, 
learning uh, center. Um, but if it's a light drizzle, I know some people say, well, it's raining and it's kind of misting and drizzling. No, we're still going to go out. We're, you know, you're going to get a little sweaty, hopefully. Your intensity's up to where you're going to get a little sweaty anyway. So we'll plan on, on exercising even in a light drizzle. Um, I would also encourage you to, to bring a, and this is for the whole trip, you'll, you'll, you'll want this, a lightweight, water-resistant, uh, pullover uh, jacket, something that's not real heavy, not a heavy jacket that's going to be, you know, keeping you real hot, but just something that keeps the water, flicks the water away. Um, uh, just because if, if it is a light mist, it may get you drenched if it's not water resistant. Um, I think I'll, you can read through the disruptions and attendance and stuff like that. Um, one thing I'm going to do with the class in Costa Rica is, um, for those of you that don't miss a day, that are there and walk jog every single day that we meet, you don't have to take the final exam. That's been pretty uh, <laughs> incentive, right? So I get be now. If you're sick, that, that doesn't mean if you're sick and you've had a rough night, you get diarrhea and vomiting or something like that. I can't miss class because I'm have, no, don't stay in bed. You know, I don't want you to come to class sick. But otherwise, you can go through the study guide. We'll be going through this in class, uh, the definitions and things. That, there's your textbook, what you need to know for the final exam attached to the, um, the back of the syllabus. Um, so if you do miss a class because you were out uh, partying late and didn't want to get up for the 745 walk jog, then you have the opportunity to take the final exam, which will be 15% of your grade. Um, so there is the theory part of the course as well. Um, the only thing I would say really about walking, jogging is that I want people to work um, as hard as they are able to. You're going to be graded on your effort and your abilities. Um, so we don't expect everybody to be on the cross-country team. But we also don't expect people to walk kind of like this in the class. Okay? So it's going to be walking with a purpose and hopefully building up to the point where you can sustain a jog uh, for a period of time. The period of time I really try to get everybody in the class up to, and I hope this doesn't scare some people away, but I hope you're able to get up to where you can jog for 20 minutes. 20 minutes. And it's a slow jog. Now, some of you are thinking, running. No, I'm not talking about running. There's a difference between walking, jogging, and running. This is not a running class. We're not going to be setting any records. Uh, some might try to push themselves and go harder, but depending on your ability, uh, it's amazing how many people can't jog one mile. One mile. And hopefully by the end of the class, everybody will be able to do that in under like 15 to 18 minutes. Okay? Anyway, I'm, I'm going to try to push you. I'm going to try to encourage you. Uh, not with whips, not with yelling, not but but come on, let's do our best we can, we can but the best we can. So, any question on the walking, jogging? Yes. Are we gonna meet uh, the week before? No. Uh, the week before what? The week before the class? No. But a good question. Um, our first class meeting is like the second week we're in Costa Rica. The first week, we're there for th three days in San Jose, and I'm going to try to work something out. i to be honest with you, I don't know the trails we're going on yet. <laughs> but I've, I've been told that they're going to show me where we can go um, from where the school site is to the university. And there's some good jogging trails around there. So hopefully that's Sunday. I think I'm going to be able to go out, and those who want to join me can come out and learn with me, and hopefully not get lost with me. But then, uh, those couple of days before we go to Tortuguero, we can go out for those that want to. It's going to be an optional. Some people that want to go out and get a workout in, we'll get together and we're going to, you know, explore some of these walking, jogging trails. Then we have two weeks in San Jose where we'll meet every morning at 745 at the, at the school site and we'll go from there. So, we're not going to meet for a walk, jog on campus here, but 
That's a great question because I would highly encourage you to start walking and jogging on your own prior to going to Costa Rica for a couple of reasons. One, we're going to be pretty active there. There's a lot of field trips. There's going to be a lot of walking and being active. You're not going to be sitting, you know, on buses going around and seeing the sights. There's not a lot of buses in Tortuguero. Okay, mm -hmm. you are going to be basically moving your body. And my experience has been for people who have been sedentary for a long period of time, six months or more, and then they start a walking, jogging class, or they start an activity like a study abroad, they're more likely to get blisters. They're more likely to get shin splints. They're more likely to get some of these repetitive injuries that occur from not kind of gearing up for it. So even though we don't meet here for the class that first week of, of January, I'd encourage you to get out and go for some walks. Burn off some of that Chris, Christmas cheer. That. <laughs> yes? Would you have a recommendation of like if they're doing steps, how many steps they should shoot for? Uh, I go for more time than steps, I would think, but step, it, whatever motivates you. Um, I would say try to go out and if you're like on a track, try to walk um, the straightaways and jog the curves. Walk a straightaway, jog a curve, and then try to build up to that to where you can jog a straightaway and a curve and walk, you know what I mean? Walk, jog, walk, jog to build up the stamina. Um, even, you know, you guys are young and pretty healthy and in my opinion, most everybody should be able to go out for a 10 to 15 minute walk at lunch or after dinner or, you know, especially um, if you're not going at real high intensity. But walk with a purpose and the purpose is getting going. Get the arm swing, get the foot strike right to where you're not just walking the mall. You're not window shopping, you're walking to get your heart pumping, get your heart beat up. Yes? For the walking, jogging class, yeah. do you know how it, uh, if I do, I'm in Miller Fair's class, if I do the walking, jogging class also, like are they going to, do they clash? No. No? So I can't do both. Yeah, and you're going to have time to shower even after the walking, yeah. jogging. Uh, which which <laughs> the people that are in his other class can't, because that walking, jogging class is right Oh, so walk jog is 7:45 yeah. to 8:50 or 8:55. So right up an hour. then the walk then then the health and wellness class starts at nine. Uh -huh. So we'll end up back at the I want to say the school site. Is that the proper yeah. the school site at nine? Uh, that's nine to 12:15 something like that. 12:15 uh, or so. And then um, there's a little break. Your class starts at one. So you would have several hours in there to change, shower, get something to eat, study possibly. Um, those, those in the health and wellness class are going to come in sweating and smiling and, and maybe put on a little deodorant. Or, uh, no, We'll go right into the health and wellness class. Um, after that. Good question. Yes? Uh, two questions. As far as uh, uh, applying for if you haven't been ready, ready to roll for walking jogging, uh, I was going to ask, is there an extra fund or expense you have to pay for it, or you can just enroll and it's no other payment if you're not enrolled? Ooh, I don't know that I can answer that. Uh, I, you know, I still think if you're only enrolled in the three units and you want to add walking jogging, I believe you'll have to pay an additional fee for that one unit class. And that would have to be done through the admissions wingspan. And would they still accept payment? Yes. Yes, yeah, they'll still accept it. In fact, that was a good question because somebody else said they, they were thinking about it. They weren't sure. And, and you can add that class even up until we start the class in January. Um, I, you know, email me and I can get you an ad code if it's already, you know, closed. We can add the class, but as far as paying, you'll have to, you'll have to pay an additional fee for that one unit class. How much is that? Anybody know? 46. Four, $46? It's well worth it. <laughs> Forty-six dollars for that one unit class. Yeah, because my other question was, you know, I, I'm very limited with what I could do as far as physicality, but I want to learn the material that you teach in. That's where I'm kind of more interested. Right. And, and I don't want, I, I've had people with disabilities in my walking, jogging class here at Citrus College, 
And I don't want anybody to feel discouraged or say, gosh, I, I can't jog for 45 minutes. Uh, that class is too hard for me. That's not my idea. My idea is to get people physically active to get a cardiovascular workout and push themselves to their physical abilities. So for your situation, yeah, we're probably not going to take you on maybe a, a tougher trail, a more of an incline. You definitely the pace is going to be at your pace that you can handle. And, and, and I've had walkers that physically cannot jog, but they can, they can walk rapidly. And so you work at your own ability. I don't want you to feel like, wow, I can't run as fast as Cloud, so why am I going to take this class? I'm going to be embarrassed trying to keep up with her. And I might be. I don't know. <laughs> but I don't want someone to feel like, gosh, I shouldn't take that class because I can't even jog for five minutes without huffing and puffing. Hey, you know what? By the end of the class, I think we're going to get you jogging five minutes, ten minutes more. So I don't mean to discourage you, but it, the other thing is it's every day. It's, every, it's uh, you know, five days a week anyway. And so it's not like you have a couple days to recover in between our work. But... Again, it's all, it's all relative, isn't it? You know, a 45, 50-minute workout for someone that's on a cross-country team is going to be different than someone that hasn't exercised since junior high school. I shouldn't say that. High school. They make us run six miles a day, so yeah. <laughs> we won't get in quite six miles. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I just want, I want you to do the best you can. You're graded on effort, not performance. Yeah. So when you conduct lecture, is it going to be at the setting of where you're going to run from, or is it going to be in class first? Typically, it's during our warm-up and cool-down time. So when we're doing our warm-up stretches, I'm blabbering. I'm talking. Uh, I'll give you an assignment the day before. Typically, every day, I give you a question. For example, tomorrow, I want you to study on the difference between a sprain and a strain, or what's the muscles that extend the knee and flex the knee. Okay, I got to do a little homework. I got to do a little studying. Then we talk about it in class the next time. And that's your preparation for the final exam. So, and then in the cool down, after the end of, try to get everybody back together at about five minutes before the class ends. And as they're cooling down, uh, we're talking about aspects related to exercise. What's training heart rate? How do you find it? What should my heart rate be when I'm exercising? How do I know if I'm working too hard? Or maybe I need to work harder. So, yeah, the lecture is, is part of the time we're together. Yes. For the trails that we'll be on, like, are they going to be like, like dirt trails, kind of like hiking trails, or are they going to be paved? You know, Paula could answer that. I would, I would say, <laughs> if, if you're at the university, it's the University of Costa Rica um, campus. Okay. But not every single street and sidewalk that you're going to be on in the middle of the city is going to be paved. So there will be a combination. And then if when you're on the excursions, if there's time and you use one of those places, it could be a little more... Rustic. Okay, but I'm just trying to think which shoes, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm bringing. I want to know which ones I should wear for walking jogging. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm going to try to find something that is a hard surface. Mm -hmm. I don't want people slipping. Yeah. I don't want to muddy. If I can, you know, yeah. it's going to be tough to find some place if it's rainy. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, not everything's going to be. I don't want to be on streets with buses and cars. No. So we're going to try to be yeah, off the beaten path. But I don't want to be on some muddy slot. I don't want to get some place where I may get lost, too. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in the jungle. So I really don't know okay. what the... I, I imagine the trails mostly in San Jose are going to be somewhat paved or uh, hard enough dirt that, yeah, you know, some good ASICs or Nike or, you know, New Balance. Okay. Just a walking, jogging shoe. Would be good. You don't need boots. We're not going to jog in, you know, sand and stuff like that. Good questions, though. Any others? Yes. Go ahead, Uriah. I was going to say, so if you're behind the rest of the class and they're keep going, and you're, are you still going to conduct lecture waiting for those people no. going? Or? We're all going to meet. Be, we'll meet back. So those that are out ahead need to make sure we're all back. Uh, what time? Nine, probably around eight forty-five. So we'd have about five to ten minutes to talk before um, they have to get to the next class. Which, if we all meet back there, I may end up starting my health and wellness class five minutes late. It's all gonna, you know, we're gonna be on Costa Rica time. <laughs> I don't want it to be so regimented that hey, we got we got to hurry and end this thing because we got another, you know. 
most of the people in the walking jogging, I think there's only two or three that are not in my health and wellness. Most of the people in the walking jogging are also in health and wellness. So it's going to be kind of just a conversion from one into the other, and we're all going to be sweating walking into the class. Okay, now let's start thinking about health and wellness topics. There'll be two or three that'll be waiting for us that aren't in the walking jogging class, unless we twist their arm and tell them to get there at 7.30 and we'll put them in a walking jogging. So I don't know if that answers your question. Um, I'm going to be talking, you know, throughout the morning and walking jogging class. And as I jog, I try to go at different paces with different people. So one day I may, you know, try to keep up with Cloud. The next day I may be, you know, walking with you for 10, 15 minutes of class. I'll find another person and kind of talk with them about how their experience is going. So I try to meet up with each person during the class time and see how they're doing and questions they might have. Especially if I'm tired, I try to find somebody a little slower that can. <laughs> yeah. No. No. Uh, don't don't bring too many pairs of shoes. Uh, you know, a good active uh, tennis shoe w is going to be great for many different excursions as well. Um, I just don't want you wearing a hard sole shoe or uh, sandals. Or um, what else would people, you know, boots, not the high boots over the ankle, unless you have real, you know, bad ankles and you want support, but, you know, just a low cut um, jogging shoe, walking shoe. Converse vans, no? Yeah. If you're comfortable walking in that, I, I wouldn't recommend it, but some people, you know, that's all they know. That's better than sandals. Yeah. Yeah. Do you recommend or not recommend for any reason uh, lightweight wool socks? Um, I for socks I'd wear cotton. Really? I would wear a lightweight cotton, and, and the reason for that is you're gonna your feet are gonna get sweaty, and they may get a little wet from the perspiration. They're easier to to wick dry than the wool. The wool get a little heavy. It's not gonna be that cold, so we don't need it to keep our our toes warm. Um, and it's gonna be humid. It's gonna be humid. Um, I would even recommend it. Rather, I wear cotton socks, and if you're concerned about you know blisters, I would rub some Vaseline between the toes to lubricate them and and so prevent blisters. If you're concerned about that, but if it's that rainy where our feet are going to get drenched, um, we're probably not going to walk jog in that because that's not real fun. Even if it's warm, it's just you know sloshing around is not my idea of fun anyway. Yeah. Okay. So. Walking, jogging. Let's uh, talk about the health and wellness class. Um, those of you in that, if you'll take a syllabus. Uh, this one does have a textbook. Uh, the textbook is called Health, the Basics. It's by Rebecca Donatell. It's the 13th edition. Um, and it's about $85, I believe, for that book. Having said that, if you can get an earlier edition through Amazon or if the bookstore has an earlier edition or you have a friend that took the class a couple years ago and has an earlier edition, then by all means, get the earlier edition. It'd be a lot cheaper. It's a great book. And there aren't that many changes from the 10th edition even to the 13th edition, to be honest with you. Great, thank you. That would be a much better idea. So Health the Basics by Donatelle. You can see the schedule of what I'm hoping to cover each day um, for the chapter. The, the class will have three exams um, and four essays. If you want to work ahead, you're more than welcome to start reading those chapters. We don't go in order, one, two, three, four, five. Um, we start with chapter 9 on nutrition, so if you want to work ahead and start answering the questions for the essay um, on nutrition, on the syllabus you'll see, and I'm not going to go through all the learning outcomes and the grading scale, you can read through that, but the questions for the essays are posted on the syllabus. That's just in an essay format, paragraph format, please number and I'll go through this with the class, too, down there. But um, number your paragraphs to coincide with the number of the question. 
And so if you want to start working ahead on that, you can uh, start getting your essays done ahead of time. Um, pretty straightforward. From the, I think most of the questions will be answered on the syllabus. If not, we'll be going over this um, down in Costa Rica. There's some great opportunities we're going to have to have guest lectures on different fruits um, in Costa Rica, and we have a guest lecture on healthcare in Costa Rica. Um, but I also am planning on just some very informal uh, meetings, uh, uh, even out in Torta Huero. When we're done and we have uh, time after dinner, we can sit down and I'd just like to throw some ideas out to you. So kind of an informal class. Um, when we're together at the hotels like in Arenal, we're going to have time. Um, we'll probably be sitting in a hot tub, and I can sit, not a hot tub, but the hot, but the, <laughs> that was wrong. Hot spring, thank you. Um, and hey, we kind of get together and have informal chats. My, my experience with uh, study abroad has been much of the learning, and probably some of the most effective learning, is outside the classroom. We're going to be on buses, and we're just going to start visiting, and people say, hey, what are some healthy ways to get proteins other than eating meat? And here we go. We start just kind of chatting about topics that you're interested in. And so we have a lot of informal learning opportunities as opposed to sitting in a class and taking notes. Um, but good question. Any any questions about the health and wellness class? Yes. There is on, on Pearson Education. If you go to the Pearson Education website, you can... Um, purchase the ebook from Pearson Education. I don't know, it's not as cheap as the Amazon though. I want to say it's $48 for the ebook, but you have to check that with Pearson Education to get the ebook. Um, P E A R S O N. P E A R S O N. Um, if you're interested in that, you can email me too. Um, you could go to the website My Lab and Mastering, and it'll pop right up for the class because I do teach that class online, and they, a lot of the, the online they'd rather have the ebook than the hard copy. So I give you the link to that. But good question. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm one that really likes the hard copy. I like to write in it, and mark on it, you know. And um, but that's a different generation. I guess now it's all just. Scrolling, that's a word. Scroll. I was trying. <laughs> I thought by doing this it would come to me. <laughs> we have another question. Next. Okay, yes. 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 Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. If you can get even anything uh, down to the 10th or 11th edition. The 12th, the 12th was just last year we used the 12th edition. So if you can get the 11th or 12th, that's fine. Much cheaper and very few changes. Those publishers are good at changing it every year, so you have to get the newer edition. And I don't like that idea. It's just, you know, it's a rip off to the student. Anyway, never mind. Um, okay, any other questions on the health and wellness class? I've, I've rambled enough. Um, other than that, uh, if you have any questions, something pops up. I check my email regularly. So even if you're some bizarre question comes up, just email, shoot me an email, and I'll be happy to respond to that. Um, I'm going to, you know, one other thing I'll throw out, I'm pretty sure I have, I know one student I get, got an earlier edition of, I have some earlier editions of the book. If you'll come by, email me, because I'm going to be on campus for a final on uh, Wednesday, and I could probably come up in my office with some older editions of the book. And it's just going to cost you a hug <laughs> to get an earlier edition. So Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon, probably a few minutes, uh, one forty-five. If you could be there, then come see me, and I'll see if I can get you an earlier edition of the book. And that way, you can start reading ahead of time. Okay, no other questions. I'll turn the time back to I think Paula. Now. All right, we're going to go um, through the itinerary and um, end up with housing, and then we're going to do the role play. All right. 
So um, all of you have logged on to your AIFS portal, is that right? Show of hands of those of you who have not. All right, no hands. Oh, I know. So um, the website is AIFSCustomized.com, and you look up here in the top right-hand corner where this yellow arrow is. Click on there, and that will um, ask you for a username and your password. That was emailed to you. It often goes to a junk folder, so if you haven't logged on, but all, no, no one's raising their hand, so that's good. You've all logged on. There, under Program Document, you have four tabs. Under the program documents, this is what you see. Your program itinerary, which was recently updated. There have been some changes um, to the itinerary. You know, what we're doing, what day. Sometimes that suffers some variation. Um, so your latest program uh, itinerary is up there. Your program handbook is super important. That is a 20-something page document, if I remember right, like 25 pages of uh, mandatory reading material, right? This is everything we're covering in this presentation plus more. It's all that valuable information that you're, is going around in your head and, you know, when you're taking your shower and you're like, oh, but wait, and, you, you know, you have a question or something pops into your brain, that handbook can probably answer. It. It's a great document to share with family. Those us helicopter parents want to read that handbook and highlight it and underline it and do all that good stuff. That's what we love to do. We just live for that. So share that with your helicopter parents. Um, AIFS information sheet is on there. That's everything that's included with the program and your insurance brochure. So that is a like eight page document of the insurance, the student medical insurance uh, policy and everything it includes. So that's all good information for you to have. Please make sure you look through it, but especially I can't stress enough that handbook. The end of the handbook is a packing list. We made some copies today. We're going to go over it um, at the second half of this presentation. So we'll do that in a little while. Uh, this is what the student handbook looks like. This is the front page. So definitely read it, definitely share it. So you're going to Costa Rica, the land of rainforests and waterfalls, right? You're going to visit La Forte. Dona. You're going to learn that there are several different kinds of rainforests, everything from the Tortuguero low marshlands to the Monte Verde cloud forests. These are all considered rainforests. There are several different varieties of them. Lots of nature trails. When you're in Tortuguero, you're going to see uh, all of those wonderful nature trails up in, um, in the marshes, through the quicksand, um, through Arenal. They have, you know, that is uh, the cloud Cloud forest. So you'll be out there when you're zip lining. You'll be on one of those cloud forest nature trails as well. It's a country with over 22 active volcanoes, so it is in the ring of fire. And uh, the country of white and black sandy beaches. I mean, it's some of the most beautiful beaches of the world, right? You'll have the Caribbean coast. Um, which is not a coast that, especially where you're going in Tortuguero, that's not an area of the Caribbean where you can generally swim. Um, the currents are not safe. It's highly um, shark populated. But uh, the lower Caribbean coast, Cahuita, Limon, not places we're visiting on this um, trip, but there are places that um, people generally swim. The Pacific coast, however, with the white and the black sandy beaches, um, you'll visit at the end of your program. You're going to Punta Leona, some of the most beautiful beaches in the world. For most of your program, you'll be located in San Jose, right here right there in the center of the country, right? That's the capital city, population of about a million and a half people. Uh, Costa Rica itself, the country, has a population of about 11 million people. Uh, have you done any research on, I know you're busy, you're going right into finals, right? This is not a good time for me to give you more reading assignments. But when you're done with your finals at the end of the week and you have a little time before you start your work for these two classes, it's a good idea to start researching Costa Rica. Like what kind of a country is it? Just off the top of my head, let me tell you, they spend almost 200 days a year on all green energy. Right, so they um, have made that pledge to move to 100% green energy by 2050. So that's an amazing feat. They don't just talk the talk, they walk the walk. I love that about them. They abolished their military in 1948. How progressive. All that money that they saved from that military um, expenses, they put into education and health care. So they have uh, free education through college. They have um, free health care. 
nationalized healthcare. So it is a wonderful country with very progressive, interesting ideas. Um, this very progressive person really loves that about it. And um, you are going to uh, really enjoy learning all of these really interesting ideas and how well they do there. Um, some, uh, like I said, your final itinerary is posted on your website. It looks like this, very detailed, even with uh, hotel info is on there and everything. So please download that, share that with family. It may suffer some tiny variations, but as if it does, it will be updated immediately and we would let you know. But just some highlights. Uh, so your departure, for those of you on the group flight, how many of you on the group flight? No. Oh my gosh, I think everybody's on the group flight. Yeah, I didn't look at the list. How, let's do this. Anybody not in the group flight flying on your own? No? Oh, that's awesome. So he is on his own. Okay. Um, so you're actually departing very late in the night of the 11th. It's an 11.30 p.m. flight on the night of the 11th, arriving on uh, the 12th on Sunday morning. Okay. Uh, so it's really important. We've had students who get that confused because it's, it is between one day and the other. And we had two students our last year that missed the flight. They thought it was the next day. So they, they, they thought they were leaving on Sunday night. So you will be leaving for the airport on Saturday evening, arriving on Sunday morning, the rest of the day Sunday because you just spent a night on an airplane, you're tired, you're a little, um, we don't have any activities planned for the duration of the day. We'll uh, show you where some local, the local supermarket is close to the, uh, the and some shops. You'll be able to um, explore around a little bit on your own and our staff will be there to help orient you. On Monday the 13th, we're gonna start with our program. So we'll do our orientation and end with the San Jose, historic downtown San Jose city tour and end with a welcome meal. On Tuesday the 14th, you'll be visiting the Museum of Popular Culture and Heredia. On the 15th, you'll leave for Tortuguero and um, your trip then from Tortuguero to La Selva Biological Station on the 18th. Uh, Sunday the 25th to the 26th, she'll be visiting the Arenal Volcano in La Fortuna Waterfall. On the 1st and the 2nd, you'll have a free weekend, so that'll be fun. On the 4th of February, you'll be en route to Punta Leona. You'll visit the indigenous community of, in Kitirisi. And then uh, the, you'll continue to do the Crocodile Tour National Park Nature Hike in uh, Punta Leona, and then return on the 7th. Yes. Um, where is the visit to the humanitarian? That one is in here. I just put come as some of the highlights. But since that's in San Jose, it's one of the days that you're in San Jose. It's in here somewhere. Okay. All right. Um, you're, actually, I can give this to you and you can. Do, do you have it? Okay. Um, so your group flight departure information, um, they just finished that up yesterday. And they are uploading the itinerary probably on Monday. They'll upload it to the website and they will be sending you the information um, via pr the, a printed copy. You'll have e tickets, so there's no physical ticket that you bring to the airport, but you'll be given e ticket numbers um, via a UPS uh, package to your home address and a UPS envelope. You'll get a printed copy of the e-ticket and then also some luggage tags, some big green luggage tags that help us identify you when you're coming out of the airport. All right, but this is all the information for the flight. You'll be flying out on, like I said, Saturday the 11th on Delta 786. It's a direct flight from LAX to San Jose, Costa Rica. Right, so you're leaving at 11.32 p.m., arriving Costa Rica at 7.15 a.m. Then your return flight is Delta 1396, departing San Jose at 8.30 a.m., arriving in LAX on 12.50, at 12.51 p.m. And that's right, that's February 7th is a Friday? It is? Yeah. Just making sure, sorry if I... Um, so the, that is your flight itinerary. 
Um, and you, like I said, you'll be receiving a printed confirmation in the mail, but you can pretty much count on those two flights because they've been it's all finalized. Uh, what I've seen though with this flight is Delta alters the the flight times just a wee bit every single, I mean, every time I look, last, when I did this PowerPoint about a month ago, it was a half hour later. So the, the times do tend to change by a few minutes. Uh, there's some variation, but the flight numbers are always the same. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Uh, we are going to go through departure day and just talk about um, what to do. <laughs> Remember, you all are responsible for getting to LAX on your own. Uh, definitely, we want you to check in a minimum of three hours prior. So if your flight departs at 11.30 on Saturday the 11th, you should be there around 8.30 checking in um, on that same evening. All right. So we definitely want you to keep in mind that there is traffic. There's traffic. LAX is being is always under construction, but especially lately, it's they're changing everything around, and it is packed. Um, I I'm not originally from the area. I moved here, and they would always talk about the traffic, the traffic, the traffic. And when I actually moved here, and I saw it was even worse than I ever <laughs> imagined. So definitely leave early. Watch Google. Um, sometimes we can have lots of traffic on Saturday evenings. So be careful of that. Um, remember that international flights board one hour prior to departure. So actual boarding will begin at 1030. OK? So that's why we want you to be there three hours prior. Uh, the when you uh, when you go to the airport, remember you want to have your ticket and your passport in your carry on or in your purse, not packed in your luggage. Right, you're going to need it at the, both of those things at the airport. Um, we say to have arrival directions to accommodations, but that's mostly for those of you that are trans doing your own flight over. Right, if you're on the group flight, you know that we're going to meet you in the airport in San Jose, so you don't have to worry about that quite as much. Uh, we'll talk about housing in a few minutes. Uh, make sure that you have a carry-on bag and you'll probably also want to check some luggage because you are staying there for four weeks. So generally you need a little more than um, just a carry-on bag. But we do want you to pack light. And at the end of the meeting, we'll talk about more, more about what to pack, what not to pack. In my carry-on, I always pack a complete spare set of clothing. I never travel when I'm going somewhere overnight. I always have something to wear the next day. I also actually have something to sleep in because to me, it's always terrible if they were to lose your checked luggage. To me, it's always terrible when I do a study abroad program, having to sleep in my travel clothes and then do my first day orientation in my travel clothes. That's miserable. And toothbrush. Yeah. Basic, maybe a little toiletry kit, cosmetics that you need. I always like to take a little thing of Advil. Um, I always, any medications that you take on a regular basis, any prescriptions and things like that, you want to pack in your carry-on, not in your checked luggage. Because if your luggage ends up going to Des Moines, you want to make sure that you have what you need immediately for that whole next day. Yes. Phone Sorry, Jen. Phone chargers is a good idea. Computer charger, you pack that in your carry-on. Yes. They have the same outlets. The voltage is a bit different. Right, but the outlets are the same. Yeah, you generally don't, um, well, we're going to talk a little bit more about electricity and what to pack in the second part of the meeting. Um, you First, you start by checking in at the airline desk. So uh, actually, this is, sorry, this is uh, the LAX. Just for those of you that are first-time flyers, and it's absolutely fine. When I was a study abroad student, it was the first time I ever left the country and had been to such a large airport. So this is absolutely normal. But if you've never been to LAX, every, it's a one-way street around LAX. It's a big U. And you'll enter this way, go past these terminals, and uh, the Delta International is in Terminal B, right? So it's the Tom Bradley all the way at the end. And of course, that's the busiest terminal in LAX, the largest and busiest terminal, but it's also the nicest one. Um, when you check in, so this is the entrance to the terminal right down here. 
And when you enter, you'll find the Delta check-in, and it's in one of these rows. There are screens there that'll tell you which desk to check in, so you just have to find the Delta desk. You check in on your own, and then once you're checked in, you go to the back, and then up on the mezzanine will be the TSA security part. So you say goodbye to the parents at the escalator. Time to cut the cord, I know. <laughs> And then the heartbeat starts. I know that anxiety heartbeat that hurts. Um, that starts, but your your kids are like, see ya, and they're <laughs> up the escalator and through to TSA. So TSA is upstairs on the mezzanine. When you go through security for TSA, you may have done it before because it's for all national and inter or domestic and international. You'll have to probably remove your shoes, electronics larger than a phone. You have to separate them. Um, make sure you don't have any liquids when you go through TSA, so remove sweaters, jackets, and um, it's a process. If there are a lot of travelers, it would take a long time, which is again why we want you there with ample time. So if you're waiting, then um, you have plenty of time to go through that. Yes? So um, if you haven't traveled before, you probably want to go onto the Delta website and it'll give you the rules about like in your carry-on you have to have smaller um, if you're going to bring like face wash or something like that, it has to be small bottles and I think it's three ounces. Something, like, something that, yeah. like that, yeah. Very small. So check that so that you don't have anything, because if you have anything in your carry-on that's too big, they're going to not let you take it. Right. And then they just make you throw it away or, you know. Yeah. Can I add to that? Yeah. So like if your data's on green and blue bottles and stuff like that, just put that in your check-in bag, the big yeah. one. Right. Exactly. Like the larger it. size. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. But put it in a plastic bag. Because they leave sometimes, and so that will say you don't have a form of ID or driver's license because they'll need to have to get into TSA. They need their passport. Also, like at Target, they right. have to be approved, and it'll be like a little clear bag with like okay. the little right. bottle so, sizes that you can put like a face wash in there if you wanted to, or lotion, and it'll say on there TSA approved. Right. I think and actually they need their passport because the they, 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 they have to show their ticket and their passport. Right. They don't have the passport. They're not going to have another right. hour at least because when you get to the entrance of LAX, that, that, that one insane. way street, yeah, it is insane. It's a good way for it. And you it will take maybe an hour just to get to that terminal. Just so you know. I just want you to be aware. <laughs> I highly recommend that flyway bus. I take your sister all the time. Yeah, you get to Union Station. You, they get you there. Last time there was a ton of traffic on the freeway. They were in that HOV lane. Yeah. Where can you get flyway here? I didn't realize uh, we could do it. it. Yeah, well, you can take the gold line. Stops, yeah. yeah, you can take the gold line all the way to Union and mm -hmm. take it from there. It's like uh, okay. Uh, it's ten dollars. Ten dollars to go, right? It's like nine fifty. Yeah. And the shuttles run how often? And about no, 20 minutes? It's, no cash. It's every half hour. Every half, every half hour. hour, 24 hours a day. You took it in the middle of the night. Yeah, so much easier. Oh, yeah. You usually have a couple hours extra just to do the train flight. Yeah. Or get to Union Station. I don't drive that. Yeah. I'll take the train. Coming yeah. back, yeah. it's kind of hard sometimes. It'll be full. Yeah. yeah. On, on the flyway? Yeah. I kind of never, wait, yeah, we're not in one, we waited for one. Yeah. We've had really good That's good. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, when you're going through TSA security, you'll have to have your um, your uh, but not your passport. You'll need it, and you'll need your um, oh, what's the thing that you get after your ticket? Boarding pass. Oh, boarding pass. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't think of it. You you need your boarding pass and your passport. So remember not to pack those. That you know you get your boarding pass at the. Um, at the airline desk, right? The, because it's a group reservation, you cannot check in prior online. It's just not a feature that the group reservations allow you to do. So it is good, a good idea to get there early, okay? They do have um, the seats already reserved, so you know you already have your seats. So And hopefully you're all together. Yes? As far as passports, do you have to have the actual passport or you can have your no, you have to have the actual passport, right? So copies you want to make and keep, you know, put one in your checked luggage, keep another one on you, keep another copy at home. Um, I like to have a copy of my passport uploaded into my email, right? If, if I ever had, a, was lost or stolen, it's always a great idea. But whenever you travel, you have to have the original document with you. Copies are not valid. Yes? When you say copies, you're just meaning that page with your picture on it. 
picture on the right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, photocopy that, that picture page. That's important. Oh, that's good. That's it. Okay. All right. So once you're through security, which is the craziest, most nerve wracking part of it, uh, you make sure you gather everything because I always hear that announcement that so-and-so left their computer at TSA, so-and-so left their wallet at TSA. Make sure that you take all your stuff. When you travel, don't be in a rush. Don't worry about people behind you. Put, take your documents out, purposely put them back and then go take your time be purposeful about everything that you do and then uh, go through the security get everything back up and then you'll go and look for your gate right on your boarding pass it'll tell you what gate you're looking for it'll be on a screen as well and then you'll probably see your faculty at your gate because they are traveling to Costa Rica with you so that's probably the first point that you'll all meet up together because you know you'll all be arriving in stages so um, that is the plan. If there is any delay or if you're delayed, it's a great idea to let someone know. You can let AIFS know that you are delayed or if you missed your flight or something. If the flight is delayed, we'll know because we're tracking the flight on the website, but we're not allowed to know specific information about individual passengers. That's just against airline policy. All right, be patient, re listen right? Pay attention. There's gate changes sometimes. There's small time variations. Relax, and we will meet you in San Jose. We'll be there to pick you up in the airport. Um, as far as independent travelers, did the independent traveler come in? No? Okay, we'll get this information to him then later. We'll skip that over. Uh, this might be the first time that you see Carla's email, but I'll show that to you in a second. On uh, Monday the 13th, you'll be having your orientation. This is where Carla will meet with you and give you your student information packet, give you all the ins and outs of the program and your stay in Costa Rica. We'll have a lot of local information, local area information there, brochure maps, things you're probably going to be interested in seeing and doing while you're there. We'll finish with a welcome lunch and a tour of historic San Jose, which is lovely. Um, here, as far as your student services, you have Carla Carballo, uh, who is the head of our office in San Jose. Carla's been doing study abroad for, I think, about 10 years now. She's got a lot of experience. She was a study abroad student herself several times um, and has been working with AFS for five years, but she had at least five-plus years working in study abroad prior to coming on board with us. And Catalina, who is adorable, she's got a great Instagram. You know, once you guys get to know her, you can follow her. She's always got some kind of bug and snake and some kind of stuff on it. She's got amazing photos. Um, of what she encounters on, on as part of what she does with us. Uh, she's ready for the rainforest. Uh, so they have an office not far from your study center. They have regular office hours from Monday through Friday. They'll also be visiting you at the study center a few times a week. Uh, but then their office is open for you to visit as, ne as much as you need. Uh, they're there to support you for the whole uh, duration of the program, give you practical information, help in the homestay if needed, advice on, on Costa Rica on travel, make doctor's appointments as needed. So if you're not feeling well, definitely contact them and they'll help you see a doctor so you feel better as soon as possible. And they share a duty on the emergency phone. So there will be a local emergency phone. I'm going to give you that number in a few slides. If you um, have any kind of issue or emergency outside of the regular office hours or you can't get to the office to see one of them, you can call the emergency phone and they will um, help you, uh, you know, get whatever the issue is resolved. Uh, they're going to give you an, a little emergency card, which is like a little business card that's going to have all that information on you. We're also going to encourage you to program that emergency number into your phone. Uh, yeah. 
This is the main patio of your language school. Remember, everything in Costa Rica is built because the weather is so nice, right? So you'll have a lot of open spaces and all of the architecture and structures there. Your school is built like a U with this beautiful garden in the middle. And that garden is sort of the student lounge, right? You can go and hang out there, have a study session there. Uh, generally, the weather's always nice. You know, it, it might rain a little, but the rain generally doesn't last more than an hour, a few hours, or a lot of overnight storms I've seen a lot there. Uh, we're lucky that you're going to um, Costa Rica in the dry season. The uh, There are two seasons in Costa Rica. They don't have four seasons. There's no spring, summer, winter, fall. There's the dry season and the rainy season or the green season. So you're going at the start of the dry season and there's no El Nino event this year. So it should be really nice weather. So hopefully, but we all know there's no more typical weather, right? That with climate change, that things are, weather's often atypical, but hopefully you'll have a nice dry time in Costa Rica. Two years ago, they had an El Nino event and it was really, really wet. So none scheduled or none predicted for this year. So that's kind of good news. Uh, you have classrooms, offices, internet access. They do coffee for free, which is nice. Uh, that's where you'll have your um, tropical fruit class. You, they also do Latino dance classes in the school that you can participate in. Um, that could be a good option for if you're not going to do the jogging because it's raining or something. <laughs> So just to give you a little idea of what the classrooms look like, you have your little computer center. I know that the computers look a little older than what we're probably used to. Uh, and then you have a little map down here. Not sure how well it's, it's stretched. I have to say the map is stretched to fit the slide. But uh, this is Barrio Dent, D-E-N-T. D -E -N -T. Costa Rica is a very interesting culture in that they don't really have street names and street addresses. They have descriptions, especially in the residential areas. Uh, so you guys are in the Barrio Dent, and you are 500 meters north of the Opal, I think, uh, car dealership. That's the address for this place. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um, but the, your CRLA is there, and then um, from here, it's about a four-minute walk to the San Pedro Mall, not San Pedro, <laughs> San Pedro Mall, and then um, maybe another five minutes to the University of Costa Rica campus. So this is where you'll probably do the majority of your walking, jogging in there. Okay. Um, and then our office is in Los Yoses, in Zapote, which is below that, a little bit down here. So from the CRLA to our office is a 15-minute walk. Yeah, and then to down, your housing is going to be all in here. All in here. You'll be a 20 to 25-minute walk, 10-minute bus ride. Buses generally are 50 cents each bus ride, so it's not really expensive. Um, you can walk or take the bus and then get my arrow back from the CRLA. There's a great supermarket right here, the Auto Mercado. You can get everything there. It's one of my favorite supermarkets in the world. Yeah. Is there an option to get like a bike or a scooter? No scooters that I know of that I've ever seen, but I haven't been there in just over a year. Um, bikes, we don't recommend that you guys operate vehicles because you are not familiar with the roads and with the form of driving and what's done and what's not done. So we consider vehicles, which bikes are, dangerous. We prefer to use public transportation or walking. Um, yeah. And I have never seen scooters there, but remember, these are not smooth, always sidewalks. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it's not easy. Yeah. Constantly. Constantly. So uh, when you move into your homestay, your family will teach you the bus to the school. So um, you will, they'll come with you on the first day of class and then they pick you up and bring you home. So the first day you get accompanied back and forth and then after that you pretty much learn. It's pretty easy. But I think buses run on a 10 to 20 minute schedule pretty much all day long. At night they don't run. 
but taxis are not expensive and they are plenty of taxis. Right, so we'll want you to do that. Our staff will talk to you a lot about that. But from the CRLA to downtown San Jose, which is all of this part where it gets a little more squarish, that is about a 15 minute walk. I used to do that walk all the time. From the, from the school to downtown, which okay. is just this area. And there's a lot of shopping. So a lot of shopping the whole way over. Yes. There's so lots of like stuff to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The mall too has stuff. Yeah. My son loved the barber there. He said it was a great barber. We're going to go over homestay in a second uh, and meals, but just to go through quickly and then go back to homestay and then we're going to do the, um, but these are the main excursions you have to, to get are one of my favorite places in Costa Rica. Um, I love that citrus always goes there. Uh, you will take a bus from San Jose to the, um, port of Pavona, and then from there you'll take the flat bottom boat out to Tortuguero. Tortuguero is on a peninsula um, up toward Nicaragua, and you'll spend two days, two nights there in a tourist class hotel. That's all that you remember. You're in the marsh and you're in the low um, rainforest. Uh, you are on the Caribbean side. You'll be in twin and triple rooms. There are cabins in the middle of the jungle surrounded by flora and fauna of Costa Rica marshlands. So there were howler monkeys running across the roof set in the middle of the night or day, early in the morning, like at 6 a.m. They were howling and running and capuchins and they were, there were, um, Agua like giant iguanas, they're beautiful butterflies. I mean it was it's one of the coolest places I've ever been. You'll do the walk through the lowlands. So you can see this is all quicksand, right? You're you're actually in the Caribbean through the jungle. They give you these wellies, which is nice, so you don't have to worry about that. They'll give you the boots. And you'll have a naturist, so a naturist guide that will take you and show you all of the different aspects of the um the rainforest, and then in one of the evenings you'll do uh, Tortuguero Village, and you'll do another one of the other evenings you'll do this tour through the natural um, park because it is natural park. I think thirty percent of their land is natural park. It's all safe, right? It's a preserved preserved land. They'll take you through that and show you all of the different um, aspects of that as well. La Selva from Tortuguero, you go right to La Selva. This is a biological station run by a, um, a nonprofit, and it is the um, something for tropical studies, the Organization for Tropical Studies. It's called something like that. And they run this, and they have visiting um, scientists there all year round who are running their own research and projects. And there are lots of grad students there as well. There you'll do two days, two nights accommodations and more like a dorm-style rooms. And you'll be there um, at the facility participating in workshops that the um, researchers are doing. They'll take you on a night hike there. So that's where you go with the little headlamp and you walk through the rainforest. This is higher up in the cloud forest. So you'll be up going through the cloud forest at night and um, seeing that this is where you see those blue and red poisonous frogs. You see those there, the tiny little ones. Yeah, they're all over there. That's pretty cool. And some kind of giant spiders and, oh. and uh, yeah. Snakes. I remember Peter, my son kept saying when they did the night hike, you had to walk across the hanging bridges, but you couldn't hold on because they were full of bullet ants. And, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> vipers, all kinds of stuff that you can't see in the day. Yeah. Did you say vipers? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't lost one yet. Uh, the, these both trips include your meals, Wi-Fi, but Wi-Fi out in the jungle is very limited. You're gonna have a hard time staying ca catching the signal and staying on the signal, so um, it's very limited. But our staff that goes with you does have, you know, our cell phone, and if anything happens, we're well connected. But don't worry, parents, if you don't hear from them, it's absolutely normal. They're not going to have a great connection. Um, 
access to computer labs, observatory platforms, libraries, uh, all meals are included on both trips, which is really nice, right? You'll have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You remember you're in the middle of the cloud forest, you're in the middle of the rainforest, there's nowhere to go for food except for the facility. So there's a nice uh, little buffet with some choices and great Costa Rican food, a lot of rice and beans. All right, a lot of rice and beans. Four weeks of rice and beans, guys. Arenal y La Fortuna. Two days, one night to La Fortuna Village. Accommodations in a hotel. You'll visit the hot springs, which is everybody's favorite. You'll do La Fortuna Waterfall. You'll do zip lining, too, while you're there. And visit Sarchi, which I think actually Sarchi has been changed to another day. In the, I can't remember, but you'll visit Sarchi, if not on that, on one of the other days. Uh, Punta Leon is at the end, four days, three nights, to Punta Leon, one of the most beautiful picturesque beaches there in um, Costa Rica. Accommodations in hotel, including meals, butterfly farm and aguaponics, marine wetland, Playa Blanca, snorkeling, hiking. You also do... You do the crocodile tour, so you'll do a boat tour through the... Uh, the um, can't think of that river, Tarcoles. All right, so uh, just to go back to housing, and then we're going to uh, do your... So you'll be in an individual or twin rooms, two students per homestay. So if you have already requested one another via the AIFS portal when you register, that will be honored. We'll have time to meet each other, talk to each other. In the next week or so, if you'd like to request one another, you absolutely can. You can do that by emailing Carla, whose information I'm going to give you in a little while. She's right, your, your on-site. But you have to each send an email. You have to request one another. That's our one rule. Yes. Um, about two weeks prior to departure. So we still, they're still in the process of, right? The group was kind of just finalized. So now she is um, working on finding all the families and um, we still want to give you a little time to request one another too, right? And we'd rather not make changes once we release that information. So we're going to give you a little time to request one another. You get two meals a day. With the homestay, you'll get breakfast and uh, dinner. They're all within a 20 to 30 minute walk or bus ride from the school. Um, and you'll have shared bathroom and living spaces. Uh, we want to set your expectations so that these are uh, wages are lower in Costa Rica, which means a I guess you could say lower, but a more simple, more basic standard of living. So homes are going to be smaller. They'll be less teched out than our homes are here. They'll be less comfortable probably than they are here. I lived outside of this country for a long time. I lived outside of this country for over 25, 26 years. And when I moved back here, it, it was just amazing how comfortable this country is right? How you can do, I could do my whole family's laundry in a whole day. I couldn't do that when I lived in Spain. It would take days to get laundry done. Um, how stores are open 24-7 practically and I could get what I need when I needed it. That is a very, it's a convenience we enjoy in this country that is not available outside of this country. Um, shower, water pressure, the hot water, Water is going to be cold and shower pressure is going to be light, guys. Let me just prepare you for that, right? You'll, it'll feel like a dribble sometimes and the water will be cool. Sometimes it'll be cold. So <laughs> it's like basic training, <laughs> but that's the way it is, right? They, um, it costs money and it uses up an amazing amount of resources to live as conveniently as we do in this country, right? So you know what I mean. Um, don't expect your family to speak English fluently. There will be a member of the family that speaks English and you'll be able to communicate, right? Um, if you need any help, you can always ask us. Our staff are all bilingual so that we can help as much as needed. There Occasionally there will be power cuts. They have power surges more than anything. In the storms and things like that, there will be power surges. So you want to make sure that your electronics are not plugged in during a storm. So I was always, I'm was i always careful when I go to Costa Rica not to leave my electronics plugged in overnight in case there's a storm in the middle of the night. I try not to leave my electronics plugged in and then leave 
right? So when I, they're plugged in when I'm awake and alert, and then I make sure that I unplug them, all right? Um, each family is different and with own merits. These are families that AIFS has worked with for, for a long time, that we know, we visited, they're well rated by our students, they're even loved by some of our students, and so um, we're sharing them with you because they work well and they're trusted, and they take great care of our students, okay? Um, you have to adapt, right? You have to be flexible and adaptable. Remember when we did our info session and I said, you're going to learn to be adaptable. You're going to be learn to be flexible. Well, you really are, right? So you have to adapt to Costa Rican way of life. They're not going to adapt to America. It's just the American style. It's just not possible. Okay. One other thing I want to mention before we go to our role play is that there are a lot of insects in the tropics, people. Right? A lot of insects in the tropics. Lots of ants. So if you buy snacks and you store them under your bed, guess what? When you wake up in the morning, it's going to be covered in ants. Um, even when I went to Tortuguero, the ants were getting in my laptop because my laptop was nice and warm and dry. Um, so, yeah, there's just lots of ants. It's part of life in the tropics. Make sure if you get snacks that you store them in Tupperware. I always recommend Tupperware more than even Ziplocs because the Ziplocs don't always close really well. And store them in the kitchen. Just ask your home state to store the snacks. It's absolutely fine. You have access to get them as much as you want. Um, Tupperware there, you can buy them in the little outdoor mercado right around the corner from the school. You don't have to bring it and you know, you just get a little zip, little Tupperware thing and you put cookies or snacks in there if that's what you want to <laughs> have for, you know, after her jogging and things like that. Okay? So just watch, you're going to see lots of ants and you're going to find me on campus next spring to be like, you were right, <laughs> these little ants. Oh my god. This is what one of the rooms looks like. So you can see it's basic but comfortable. Um, meals. Lots of rice and beans like I said. Expect rice and beans for breakfast. Expect rice and beans for lunch. Expect rice and beans for dinner. It is a staple of the Costa Rican diet. And as a matter of fact, I was talking to the, the faculty advisor at Costa Rica and she was saying it's in, it's a bl blue country, I think she said or something like that. It's like they have the most octogenarian through like their their people live the longest because of this rice and beans part being a staple of their diet right a cup of beans a day well i who am i talking complete to complete protein complete right? protein right there rice and beans so learn to love it you probably will not eat it for a couple weeks after you get back, but learn to love it while you're there. And they don't consider it always the same thing because they have different ways of making it, and so they consider that completely different. Okay? But it is often for breakfast even with fried egg or scrambled egg, um, for lunch and dinner with fish, with meat, with, and then different ways prepared and mixed with tomato and things like that. So that's different. Uh, also a lot of juice. They drink, uh, they eat a lot of fruit. They drink a lot of juice made with that fresh fruit. Like they have those ninja blenders going 24 seven and they can make some fruit juice. Like I have never had in my, it's delicious. Try all the different kinds of juices because it's probably stuff that you have never seen or heard from. At least I know I hadn't. And I tried all different kinds and some of it, I mean, most of it, not all of it was fantastic. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Um, will our homestay have like bottled water for us or do we need to go purchase a pack of our own and bring it back? They, um, yeah, that's a good question. I'm trying to, I, I remember right, they have the bottles. Do you remember, John, what they well, kids do? I, I can't remember. Well, it says sink, drink the water. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've never had issues with the water. Um, but you can buy water and store it if you want to. Okay. Yeah. The school has the the bottled water in our office does too. You know those little dispensers? dispensers? Yeah. It is a good idea to bring a, a water bottle to have, especially when you're doing the, you know, when you're out on the excursions, it's an all day walking hike. Even the water in Tortuguero was very good. Fine, yeah. Yeah, so I thought I might have to bring some water. Yeah, tablet. and you're drinking the water when you're drinking the juices, so you're fine. It's pretty healthy water. Okay. All right, lots of fruit, lots of banana. Wait till you, I can't wait to hear what you guys think about the tropical fruit class. It's crazy good. It's so good. Right, so just, just to talk about um, your health, this is 
from Shauna Bigby, our school nurse, and she actually went to Costa Rica before as a psychology instructor. Um, so she told me some things to tell you. So she wants you to be mindful of your self-care. Of course, you'll be in a new environment. Um, there's not a huge time change, but it could affect you. So if you have a history of anxiety, depression, uh, if you're taking medication, or if you have mood changes, make sure you let your teacher know so you can always talk to your teachers if you're experiencing any difficulties. Um, and that's completely normal. If you haven't been away from home for a long time, it's so normal just to miss your friends, your town, your parents, your routine. You, you'll you miss certain foods and you'll feel different, so that's normal. Um, you should expect that and just know it's passing and and that's part of the experience. But if you do notice, is, notice big changes in your, your mood or your roommate's mood or your friends, um, please share that with each other. Talk to each other. You could say things like, you know, I'm feeling kind of lonely or I'm really missing my mom. Um, it's great to talk about these things and share them with, with your roommates, your teachers, your AIFS advisors. Um, so there's a simple form there for you. Uh, this, this form here, right? And this will go to Shauna, Shauna Bigby, the school nurse. So if you, uh, I've already asked you about this stuff, but again, you know, uh, write your name, email, phone number, and list any allergies medications and what you take them for and your plan uh, for them while you're abroad. It's voluntary, but um, we just want to support you uh, while you're abroad. So just return these to me. It's confidential. Again, it'll just be me and uh, your instructors and Sean and Bigby. And uh, it's an emergency information form. So if something does happen, we have this on file and we're able to help you. Um, yeah, so, and if you take prescriptions or over-the-counter medication, I think we talked about this a lot, but um, be sure to take it with you. It's not a good time to go off your medication. If you're taking medication, do not go off your medication. Be sure you have enough, even extra, for the entire duration of your stay. Um, so marijuana is legal here. I don't know what the, the deal is in Costa Rica, but just don't bring that with you. Uh, make sure you're not bringing anything illegal into Costa Rica. Or CBD stuff. CBD stuff too, right. Um, don't take them with you, I'm sorry. And birth control, make sure you have enough to cover you, to take with you as well. If you take your medications, be sure to bring them in their original containers. Customs may do random checks and you know you don't want random pills and bags, right? So keep them in the original container. Um, and again, most importantly, if you're not feeling well, Physically or otherwise, be sure to tell someone. So AIFS will provide medical care if it's needed. Um, you know, sometimes students put off going to the doctor. Don't put it off, just go, because then you'll get better faster. And also, um, you know, this the campus is kind of going with you. So the, the rules still apply while you're in Costa Rica. For example, Title IX, which deals with harassment. Okay, so if you experience any harassment, talk to your faculty or our Title IX advisor here, Brenda Fink. So if you just look at the Citrus A through Z in index, you have the Title IX page available to you there. Um, okay, so that's all the fun stuff. So you have your form. I'll give you, what, 10 minutes for a break. The bathroom is through this door across the lobby and then keep going straight back for uh, the women's bathroom. Thanks. Yes. You know, as John mentioned, um, the student code of conduct and disciplinary action and stuff like that, it's, it's very serious on a study abroad program. Um, we certainly don't want to have to send someone home early because of uh, behavioral problems. Um, you know, if you're involved with drugs down there, um, you know, you're not going to be able to stay. You're going to be sent home. We had a situation where one person was carrying a knife. Um, and, you know, <laughs> there's some legal situations that if we can prevent it, we want to. We, we, anyway, I'm just, not to scare you off, but don't think that, hey, since we're away from California, you know, the school policies and student conduct don't pertain to you. Uh, but there will be discipline, and, and it'll be, it'll be, you know, 
quick and appropriate for the for the behavior. Um, it might be that you miss a couple of excursions, even if your behavior is you know out of line. If, if there's fighting or I don't know, you know, just bizarre stuff going on, uh, inappropriate behavior at the nightclub or something, and we get information that you know there's behavior problems, then we, uh, as a program um, faculty, have to you know discipline it. Not necessarily just in the classroom. Yes, go ahead. Um, are we allowed to carry like pepper spray with us? I don't think so. It's that's I know that's it's illegal, illegal in, in Europe. Um, uh, you can't bring it on an airplane. I've like checked it in my bag before. And I oh really? It back and forth between uh, places, but I, I don't know. If, like I would Google that about Costa Rica because a lot of countries it's a weapon and illegal. Right. Self defense though, like if someone's like trying to kidnap me, well, so like. So again, so you have to look at it like how the country looks at it, yeah. and I don't know. So the pepper spray won't out. kill anyone. It'll just like. The term for a second. First of all, yeah, no. But you have to follow the country's rules. Because okay. if you don't, you'll pay the consequence mm -hmm. later. And that won't even be up to us. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? So yeah. you can look it up online and see. I don't know what Costa Rica, Costa Rica's rules are about pepper spray. Mm -hmm. I know. Um, but there's also just, I mean, to put this in perspective. So I'm female. I've been around the world in a lot of different countries, right? Um, I don't carry that with me in other countries, but you do. You just have to be aware, just like you would here. You know, if it's late at night, you probably don't want to be by yourself, especially in an unfamiliar place. But I mean, like I've been in London, and I was I went to a play at night, and I came back by myself. And one time there was a rather intoxicated male walking behind me, but there were also two officers following him. So. You know, I just moved out of their way and they kept going. Okay. Um, so you want to use some common sense ideas about not putting yourself into a dangerous situation. Yeah, right? I'm not there um, yet. And just stay together. You should be fine. You shouldn't be in any situations like I mean, they've been going to Costa Rica many times over the years and as far as I know, right? No. Yeah, the worst case scenario is people are being pickpocketed. Mm -hmm. So my advice to you is first of all don't wear good jewelry. Don't take expensive things. You know, it might seem like obvious, but for example, I'm married. I'm wearing a silicone ring. I'm not going to take my wedding ring there because that way I don't have to worry about it getting stolen, lost, anything else. Does that make sense, right? Yeah. So I have a $10 silicone ring. If anything happens to that, okay. You know, yeah. It's 10 bucks. I don't care. I'm not going to wear my nice earrings and necklaces. You follow, right? Yeah. You keep your money on you at all, all times. I recommend getting a money belt, um, and then that's where you keep any credit cards, or if you take a debit card or cash or anything like that, you keep it there. Put a small amount like in your pocket, and usually your front pockets are safer than your back pockets, just so you know. You might be uh, commonly putting your phone in your pocket. I wouldn't do that, because that's how you're gonna get pickpocketed. Do you understand, right? So have a day pack backpack, and you put the phone inside one of the inside pockets. So it's a little less convenient to get to, but you're not going to be on your phone a lot. You're going to be doing things, right? You're going to be too busy to be on your phone like you are here. So you just have to use some common sense things, and you'll be relatively safe. Does that make sense, right? And um, there are like nightclubs and things like that that people go to, but I would go together. Don't go by yourself and you know, make sure you're getting but it's not going to be necessary. And people are different in other countries, just so you know. We mm -hmm. live in a culture where you're more likely to get attacked as a female here than you are in a lot of other places around the world if it's not here. <laughs> so we want to keep that in mind as well. So we teach our, our young women to be very protective of themselves, <laughs> yes. right? Because we hold ourselves responsible if something happens to us, do you understand? Mm -hmm. Right? That's our culture. That isn't how it is in other places. In mm -hmm. other places, males are actually raised to not do a lot of those things. Doesn't mean they can't help them. Just means they're raised differently. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? And so those kinds of things are less common in other places. So be aware, take your awareness with you, but don't have that expectation that someone is gonna hurt you. Does that make sense? Because, you know, as long as we stay together, we're fine. 
Bring a loud whistle. Bring a coyote whistle. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. So, um, 12.05, we'll come back. Yeah. So, fill this out and give it back to me when you can during the break. Yeah, don't worry about filling it out if you have nothing. So. So, um, as far as what to bring, what not to bring, you um, should probably check one bag. Now, in flights to Costa Rica, all flights, no matter what airline you use, the checked bag is not included in the airfare that you paid. So, it costs $25. It's treated kind of like a domestic. Uh, $25 to check a bag. We do recommend that you check a bag because you need stuff while you're there, right? Just one carry-on for six pounds is not going to be enough for your needs while you're there. So do count on checking one bag and paying the $25 fee to Delta when you get to the airline. That'll be a maximum of 50 pounds, but that's a lot of weight to bring to. Um, having the, do count on one carry-on, one personal item. That can be a purse, a laptop bag, a camera bag, something like that. So that's generally all airline allowances. Check with Delta, but I did already, and that is, that's what the Delta allowance is, okay? Um, definitely bring enough medication that you take on a regular basis for the entire program. We can't stress this enough. I know we said it many times, but sometimes people zone out. So I want to repeat that you have to bring the medication that you take on a regular basis enough for the entire program. As a matter of fact, I would bring a little extra. It is normal to feel strange when you first get there, like your body is adjusting to a new time zone. They're two hours ahead of us. They're on central time. Um, it's a new climate, right? A lot more humid. So especially those of you that have asthma and breathing, you want to bring enough to, uh, and plus a little extra because maybe you're taking a little bit more than you do until your body adjusts to the new place. Um, clothing that you can wear, layer wash easily. Again, the same thing. Your homestays will have washers. You get one load of wash uh, included and they will dry it on a drying rack. So in that humid climate, it does take a few days. So you wanna have options to wear in the meantime. Um, leggings, uh, Costa Ricans don't, they, they dress casual. They're not a super, they're not like Paris or Milan, you know, this isn't a fashion program, it's Milan. So we want you to dress practically, comfortably. They tend to wear a lot of jeans, a lot of pants. You're not going to see them walking around in shorts. You probably won't see them walking around in leggings unless they're exercising. But that Han Solo look, that's what the boys in Spain call it, <laughs> where you wear the boots and the leggings and the longer, that Han Solo look, that's what they call it in Spain. That's very popular there still. And you probably still will see people in boots walking around even though it's 70 degrees. That's just kind of, I, I saw that, I was laughed. that's funny. Um, but definitely bring what works for you. Um, I wouldn't, with college t-shirts, that you probably won't, the, the, you, that makes you easy identifiable as American. You won't see that a lot, but uh, you'll see the fashion is pretty much universal now. Um, insect, re insect repellent and sunscreen, that's definitely going to be something that you need, but you can buy them there. All right, and there's a great supermarket just around the block from the school that has everything in it. Um, and you probably will need that between the time that you go to. I was just thinking the when we first are there. When you're in the hotel. hotel. There is another supermarket right near the hotel. Yeah, you can get that in the pharmacy there too. And it's not super expensive. And maybe you won't even want to split the cost between you and your roommate because probably not going to need a whole one for the four weeks just for you. So I would probably recommend getting it there and bringing other stuff. Waterproof hiking boots and rain jacket, poncho. Definitely a rain jacket for those random storms, the umbrella. <laughs> I didn't think you'd need waterproof hiking boots, but my son last time when I didn't send them with him, he was mad. And he went to a sporting goods store and spent three times the amount on hiking boots there than if I had gone to Big Five and gotten him a pair when he, he was here. So definitely, I would say that's probably a good idea. When you're in Tortuguero and, and all those places, you'll need them in a few minutes. Um, 
you that list is pretty thorough and that's pretty much everything you need uh, the things we wrote in and on the bottom right were things that we thought of that were binoculars I think are really interesting because a lot of it is camouflage a lot of it's far away it is really interesting so if you want to invest in binoculars or maybe an uncle a grandfather or an aunt or someone has one in the family that you could borrow It'd be really interesting. Our nature guides, when we go, they always have high-powered ones that they'll set up the shot and then they'll let you take a look. Um, but if you're interested in really seeing everything the whole time, then binoculars is, is a good thing to have. Um, I like the idea of the extra battery, right? The extra power pack. That's always handy. Uh, extra cords, plugs, stuff like that. We're going to get to electricity in a few minutes. All right, two towels, one for the beach. When you go on beach trips, one for the shower. When you're on beach trips and you're in hotels and stuff like that, they have the shower towel, all right? But you might want a beach towel for those days too, do they okay? Have do they have what? <laughs> is, do they have hot water in the hotels? They do, it's better in the hotels than it is in the home stays. Yeah, you'll be, wait till you see the water heaters in the shower itself, they're right up, above the shower like the water goes through this heater and then hits you so it's in the home state so it's not very good in the hotels it's better yeah yeah all right cold shower is good for the soul right the yoga You're supposed to take cold showers right <laughs> see they study abroad you thought you were we're signing you up for boot camp baby <laughs> this isn't study abroad it's boot camp you're going in the military after this right. <laughs> it's gonna be nothing <laughs> Don't bring, don't bring yeah. pillows, don't bring bed linens, although I like to have a bed little, you know those new travel pillows yeah. for that overnight flight? That is my saving grace. I would go nuts if I didn't have one of those on that flight, because you need to sleep. I do. My, yeah, I'm 50, so I need to sleep. Uh, clothes you might wear, leave fancy, expensive stuff at home, like Dr. Miller Thayer said. It's definitely, don't bring jewelry that you could lose or have stolen. Expensive stuff, don't bring it. Just leave it home. Wear the same stuff over and over again. That's what we all do is study abroad. Uh, hair dryers and flat irons, don't bring those. The, um, cur uh, the As far as um, electric and voltage and all that good stuff. So the plugs are exactly the same. You don't need the converter, right? So the sockets are the same. You'll be able to plug in your appliances, no problem. The voltage is, is a bit different and there is um, also can be power surges, like I said, especially during storms and things. So um, you can only plug in stuff that has built-in converters. So your laptops, your tablets, your phones, your digital cameras, those are fine because those chargers have built-in converters and your appliance should be fine. Um, the hair dryers, flat irons, they are not made for travel. They don't have the built-in converters. So those will burn out, right? Uh, they're made for Especially if they're travel ones, they're only made for short-term uh, travel and hotel circuits, right? So the home stays, they'll, you could start fire, you could trip up the, the electric circuits, or your, usually your appliance will burn out. So be careful about that. Uh, you can buy blow dryers there. As far as flat irons, I mean, it's a very humid climate. So my hair, this is usually like this the whole time I'm there. So usually ponytail and good to go. Right? Boom. Um, so it's not worth it, my, in my opinion. Okay? Is that... Yeah? Okay, good. To fly through the rest, um, definitely you, as far as communication, we want you to communicate with your parents and your family and home and loved ones as soon as you get there. Confirm that you arrive safely, that you're fine, that you're with your group, everything's good. Um, and then you want to download some good apps like uh, WhatsApp which is used across the world. So everybody else except in the States has WhatsApp, right? So if you meet any Ticos, Costa Ricans, they call themselves Ticos, Tica, Tico, um, that the first thing they'll ask you for is your phone number so they can WhatsApp you, and that's the way that they communicate. Uh, Viber, Skype, FaceTime, that's gonna be the cheapest and best way to communicate with home, right? You can do the voice call, or you can do the video call if you have enough an update or gigas or internet, you're right, if it's strong enough. You can text, you can text yeah, call. call the whole thing. 
Um, consider an international plan with your phone. So for example, T-Mobile users, yay, I switched to T-Mobile just because you can, you have intern, in unlimited data internationally and free texting. So that is a great feature of that plan. If you're using another provider, you want to look into what your costs would be to use data and to text internationally, all right? Some of them have good internet plans or international plans, sorry, but you wanna be careful on what your data usage limitations are, right? AT&T will sell it for $50 for the month. You can use up to this many gigs. Be careful because if you go over, then they start to charge you like crazy and it get, could be very expensive. So just be careful. Um, most students just use it on an as need basis, like when, if they need to use Google Maps or they need to look up a website or check their email and then any kind of real data usage, they'll do it when they're connected to Wi-Fi. That's probably the best thing to do. So you're not gonna, be able to use your phone like you do here, but um, you want to watch because bills can be bad once you're back. Would they have like a cheap cell phone I could just buy there that would make phone calls back to yeah. the United States? It's very expensive, right? Okay. So the only kind of phone, the only kind of Costa Rican phone you could go was would be a pay as you go, and you're talking probably at least four to five dollars a minute to make a phone call back. <coughs> the only way you can call home is through a, a Oh, it's like a Wi-Fi call, right? So it would link to your, once you're on Wi-Fi, all right? Or you can use your data if you have a good data plan, but I would make it, you know, short. Be careful how much data you're using, yes. Um, also, Wi-Fi, you can use Facebook Messenger, too. They have the... Exactly, all of those. Like all of those. Just as long as you're like connected to Wi-Fi or you're careful about how much data you're using. Like, just for... A short call, something like that. Well, once you're on Wi-Fi, then you, all of those apps, you can they're unlimited, really. Right? Just know that the Wi-Fi, the speed is not going to be what you're used to. It's going to be more basic. In San Jose, it'll be better. When you're outside of San Jose, it's going to be so-so. Okay? You're in the jungle, people. You're in the jungle. Um, <laughs> all right. Is that, that's basically it for communication. Any questions about that? No? It'll be good to get off the grid for a little, you know? Um, how, is, how good is the Wi-Fi going to be, at least during, when we're at the school areas? Again, in San Jose, yeah. it'll be good, pretty good. As good as it gets in Costa Rica. Okay. Um, I had no problem, especially with voice calls. FaceTime calls, eh, sometimes the video would freeze, and especially if you're all video chatting in the school at the same time, it's going to be <laughs> so, so quality. I'm taking an online class, and so, yeah, <laughs> I'm taking that as well. Not what you're used to. So to watch videos, to, to email and send documents and to read and maybe download a document, but to if, you, if there's anything that you have to stream and watch, it's going to be a challenge. So when you're in your home states, for example, and you want to Netflix, not Netflix and chill. I just learned what that meant. <laughs> okay, boomer. Um, <laughs> I just like to throw that kind of stuff in. Um, you, uh, you, if you want to watch, if you want to stream or watch videos, it's going to be a challenge. Right. So if it's a class that has uploaded videos and stuff like that, it's going to be hard. But to do regular homework and stuff, you should be okay. Did you talk to your instructor about it? I would talk to him. Because there'll, there'll be times like when you go to Tortuguero. Yeah, no there's no. Yeah, it's gonna be hard. But if you talk to the instructor ahead of time, sometimes they can send you links, so maybe you can watch the things before you leave. Yeah. Or when you get back, because when we get back, there's still another week of winter intercession, so we'll technically be done, but other classes won't be. So there might there's like a two week window, or week you call the doctor, you might be able to pick up. All right, any other questions about communication? No? Okay, good. Receiving mail, I mean, the only reason why you receive any mail would be um, 
a, an emergency, like your debit card needed to be replaced or something like that, in those cases, talk to staff. They'll give you a P.O. box information that you can send it to in that case. Otherwise, forget about care packages. You don't have enough time. You're not in one place long enough. And, and those supermarkets, the Alto Mercado is fantastic. They have a lot of American stuff. Um, as far as cultural differences, we kind of covered it when you were with, uh, when we talked about homestays. Um, it, it is a slower paced life. It's a more basic paced life, but it is a wonderful country, a very special country. And, and it's, it's good to learn their way of doing things, right? Be careful about customer service expectations, stuff like that. You're not going to get the same, you know, very, um, servicial, right? That yes, the customer's always right. The customer's always right. That kind of thing that doesn't happen as much and they're not fast. It's very slow. You're going to take your time. Right? You're going to sit down and have a cup of coffee instead of taking it with you. <laughs> wow. It's good. It's good to slow down a little bit. Yeah. Um, safety and security. This is, a, I mean, it's a big deal. We don't want to scare you, but we want you to be very conscious of your health, your health and safety while you're there. So pickpocketing is your biggest issue like Dr. Miller said. I mean everything she said was spot on and I'm not going to repeat verbatim what she said because it should be enough but um, especially when you're on pu in public places in crowds you want to be very careful of who's around you and watch your stuff. My son was pickpocketed I think the second week there. He was in one of the discotecas and he suddenly discovered that he has moves and he was there dancing and the girls were dancing and my son was like yeah there's all these girls and just a couple boys and he was like yes and somebody lifted his brand new galaxy phone that he got for christmas and it was gone but he was so happy he didn't even care i was like huh? i'm still paying for that um, luckily, we got the insurance, right? So that helps. Having your stuff insured is important. So in our homeowner's policy, we have um, personal effects aspect of that. And so that helped pay for part of what that iPhone that I think I just, or the Galaxy that I just finished paying off, actually. Um, so just be careful. Um, markets, buses, crowds, be careful of your stuff. I always, I grew up in New York. We had paranoia drilled into us since we were little kids. Be careful of your stuff. Where's your stuff? Do you know where your stuff is? Don't leave your stuff unattended. You know that all the time. It was just drilled into our head. So I always carry my purse crosswise. I always make sure that my stuff is put away properly, zipped. I always keep my, when I'm in a crowd, on a bus, on a metro and stuff, it's in front of me and I always have my finger on my zipper. So that way I know nobody can slip it open and stuff. That's the kind of you have to be careful of. They often work in teams. Yes. So someone will instruct exactly. you know, others pickpocketing you. So, you know, be careful if someone's trying to get your attention for something. And that's why she was, what she just said about keeping your hand on your zipper is important because um, if you have a bag, a backpack, a purse, also if you're sitting down, you want your backpack or your purse either in your lap or between your legs with your legs actually on it mm -hmm. so that you'll feel it if someone tries to grab it because there's things like that that can happen yeah. to you. I mean, we've gone over all of these. Um, just to highlight, having photocopies of your passport is really important. Leaving one home, uploading one. You've uploaded one to your to-do list with AIFS, so we have a copy as well. That's important. If it's lost or stolen, then you have to make a trip across town to the U.S. Embassy to get a replacement passport. So it's a hassle, and it costs like a hundred and something dollars to do that. So, But if you have a copy, you can't travel with the copy, but it makes that process a lot easier okay um, expensive items things like that we talked about it avoid joining demonstrations you're not gonna see a lot of demonstrations there in some states a very peaceful country so but if if you were to see one avoid them they're not safe sometimes tempers flare and things fly and that's when there are injuries so no matter how you feel about uh, the Costa Ricans stay away from their demonstrations keep alert and clock it's common sense right common sense as far as money we're gonna get to that topic now uh, first thing you have to do is set a travel advisory with your bank you can do that today you set it for the dates of your trip 
So you'll set it for um, January 11th or 12th through February 7th. And you get, when you set the travel advisory, you pick uh, the countries where you're going to go. And that way your bank knows any activity in that country is not deemed fraudulent or suspicious, right? Um, if you decide to take the free weekend and go to another country, like sometimes students will want to take a bus to Panama or Granada, Nicaragua, generally students don't, you don't have enough time to go that far, but if you were to do something like that, make sure that you set a travel advisory. They have a different currency, you'll have to get money out in that other country. You have to make sure that you tell your bank, okay? Just keep that in mind. Um, you can use, you always should have two forms of accessing funds, right? So your debit card will work at ATMs and with most businesses there in Costa Rica, you'll be able to use a debit card or a credit card. Um, make sure you have a four digit pin. Sometimes five digit pins don't always work on the older ATMs that you might find mm -hmm. there. Um, but I always make sure that my, my son had a debit card and he had a credit card or a travel money card, which has now replaced the uh, traveler's checks. We used it in the 80s, we had traveler's checks. We used to sign them, it was a lot of fun. Are those available to banks? You can get those at banks, yeah, you can get them online. Um, probably get them at Walmart even, they even have them. Just make sure it's a travel one because you get better rates. It's a travel check. Travel, travel, prepaid, prepaid travel card or travel visa card, travel, uh, right? It's one that you can yeah. use, you get better rates. Grocery store, I'm pretty it? sure, just make sure you can use it internationally. Oh, I see, I see. And you can upload funds onto that card and then use it like a debit card. So it's good to have a backup plan in case your debit card is lost, stolen, or your bank thinks it was suspicious activity and they freeze it. And when they do that, um, sometimes if they freeze it while you're trying to get money out of an ATM, the ATM will be instructed to swallow your card and you cannot get it back. So you have to have a backup plan just in case, okay? Um, currency, they're called colones. Col who is Colón? Christopher, Cristobal Colón was Christopher Columbus. Uh, that's the name of the currency there, it's a Colón. So about 585, 600 colones to a dollar. So um, you will get a lot of change, a lot of coins, bills. The bills are the prettiest bills I've ever seen in my life. Wait till you see them, all different colors, all different animals and uh, butterflies and monkeys. They're so pretty and they're kind of plastic. It's really cool, very eco-friendly money because it doesn't have to be reprinted as often as our money. So very interesting to learn about the money. A decent change purse is a good idea, you know, like a little pouch. All right, um, bringing U.S. cash, you can't change exchange it a lot in a lot of the banks. Some of the banks will do it, but it's a big process. It takes a long time. The best thing to do is maybe travel over there with $100, $150 maybe in Columbus that you have ordered from your bank here, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, there's even currency places at like South Coast Plaza, I think has it, the Ontario Mills has a currency booth because they deal with so many travelers. It's good to have a few colones just in case. Also the, uh, You're traveling with the group, so you don't have to worry about it when you just get there, but maybe a hundred dollars, 50 to a hundred dollars, not a lot, just something to have just in case, yes. That's about a buck. Like, what could you buy over there? Like, is that, is that a meal? Is that, like, well, a bottle of shampoo? Is that, like, well, what is that two bus rides. Two bus rides. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Round trip bus. I, it was Coffee. looking pretty expensive Maybe. for bills compared to, like, what we would pay, I think, when I was looking at it. It was, like, uh, I want to say, like, maybe $12 a mill or something. Uh, just to finish up, health and insurance, definitely about health, uh, what John said before. If you're not feeling well, go see a doctor because, so, you know, things will build, right, and turn into more serious. So if you're not feeling well, go see a doctor and get medication. So you don't pay to go see the doctor? No, you do have to. You are responsible for the payment. Our insurance will cover you. So if you're a citizen, you have a health card, and that entitles you to free access. Yeah. But remember, if you're a citizen, you're paying taxes, so you're paying for it. 
right? You're just not paying deductibles and out of pockets like right. we are here. So how much is it if you go to the doctor? Depends on what doctor you see and everything. If you um, generally you have to pay if the bill is up to five hundred dollars, and then we'll give you the insurance forms. We'll um, you'll fill them out. We'll send them in for you, and you get reimbursed. You're reimbursed for everything. Um, after fifty dollars, that's your one-time deductible per claim. Um, your medications count, any health treatments you need, tests, right. visits, and everything counts. If you're if the illness or like if you break your leg, God forbid, but and then it's over six hundred dollar bill, then a direct payment is arranged through our doctor, and you would be responsible for fifty dollars. And after that, everything else would be direct billed. Uh, should she bring her Kaiser card or just a copy of her Kaiser card? Um, just a copy should be fine. She shouldn't need it. Yeah, right. Because if what happens is Kaiser would just tell you probably pay and then bring the bills back, and we'll talk about reimbursement after that. You could ask Kaiser how they do it, right, when they travel. <laughs> but my my brother-in-law works for Kaiser, and once when I was living in Spain, he needed a doctor. He okay. paid the bill and then submitted it to yeah. Kaiser afterward and got reimbursed. That's generally how it works. With our insurance, um, the, the bills under five hundred dollars you pay for, and then get reimbursement. And then if it's over that, like generally over hospitalization things like that, then it's directly billed. All right, great doctors. Um, I've gone with students to the doctor there several times because I have worked in Costa Rica with several groups, and I've done doctor visits, and um, the facilities were just as good, really. Very modern, you know, te technology today. It's not like it was back in the day. So, okay? But definitely do that. And remember, you're on an academic program, right? So there's a lot to do. There's a lot to do at night, right? There's a great night scene. Um, if you are burning the candle at both ends and you're going, 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 and not getting the rest you need, you're not eating properly, then eventually you're going to get sick, right? Like Miley Cyrus had to stop living like Miley Cyrus after a while, right? That she couldn't take it. So you can't live like a rock star without paying the physical consequences, right? So take care of yourself. Take naps. That's a, a good and, point right when you arrive because you'll be on that, that uh, overnight flight. Yes. So be sure to... Don't Rest that party. day. S sleep. sleep. Rest that day. Once you Drink get water. checked into the hotel, eat something and take take a nap. All right. And then just to finish up, remember, like I said, this is an academic program, right? You are expected to follow your academic course. You're expected to be there for your course uh, classes. You can't miss your course sessions you have a part all of the field trips and activities were designed by your faculty to complement your academics so you're expected to participate in all of the excursions and field trips um, if you don't do that then there will be consequences we also have other student conduct norms that you have already ticked the box on right when you enrolled there were terms and conditions that you ticked the box to and you could open up what those terms and conditions were you probably didn't, but guess what? We enumerated a bunch of student conduct norms that we expect you to follow. What are they? Well, they're the same that they are here on campus. Mutual respect for your fellow students, your faculty, your homestays, your guides, AIFS staff, which means we won't tolerate actions like abusive behavior, be it verbal, be it um, physical, or be it sexual that will not be tolerated toward one another, toward anyone in our study abroad community. Zero tolerance of violence, right? So the once you start swinging, it's, you know, we won't. You have to be able to control yourself. And drugs, zero tolerance of drugs. Marijuana is not legal on a study abroad program. All right, it's not a substance that you can partake in and continue, you know, you're violating the code of conduct. Um, alcohol, you, you have to, I'll get to you in just a second, let me finish. Um, 18 years or older, you can partake in alcoholic beverages in Costa Rica, but the, it's, you have to, um, the use of them has been prudent and, and in line with our conduct or our code of health and safety. So if... Exactly. Exactly. So if you are using so much alcohol that you cannot behave in a manner that is, you know, 
is in line with our code of conduct, then you are putting your health and safety in risk, right? You are becoming physically ill and vomiting all over. You are sitting down in a chair thinking, mistaking it for a toilet. We've had students do that kind of thing. And it sounds really funny until you have to actually witness it or clean it up. Um, in the homestay, you're coming home so drunk that you're doing things like that. It won't be tolerated and there will be consequences. We generally have the three strike policy. First time will be a verbal warning with your faculty, our staff, and citrus will be notified. Second time would be a written warning would go on your record. Citrus gets notified. Third time you'll be removed from the program. No refund, no credit. All right. There's no refund and no credit. So be careful about what you do. There are consequences, and we will hold you to it. Unfortunately, we've sent people home mm -hmm. several times. So we don't, want to we don't want to do that, but we will do it. Because once we don't, then it becomes, you know, it, we lose all of our academic rigor and our health and safety and best practices. So we don't want to do it, OK? Um, consider yourself warned, all right? Consider yourself warned. Sometimes things are so egregious that we go right to removal. All right? So don't do it. We won't put up it's, with it. it. You had a like question. It's hard. Okay. Yeah. Like, you really got to be stupid. To you do, but stuff. people are stupid sometimes. Yeah, and sure. you need to learn these lessons earlier stupid. than later because consequences could be worse later on in life. This should be way before, but climate, you can see how nice the climate is. Look at that straight line of temperature, right? Boom. It's a lot of rain. Between, this is right between 68 and 86, a straight 70s. And then the low. But January, no rain. That's low good right 50s, there. yeah. So this is the dry season. This is the wet season, right? So you're there in the dry season. No El Nino event as far as I know. So you guys should be, you know, beautiful. Actually, San Jose, the, the locals call it the uh, eternal spring. The weather's always spring-like. So I never need anything more than a light blouse, really. Not even at night. Maybe bring a sweatshirt for the plane, but you shouldn't need anything heavier than a sweatshirt. One sweatshirt, and you're good. Rain, light rain jacket, right? Okay. Wow. Okay. Good job, Paula. Right. This is your. Um, sometimes I feel like I've talked for years. This Lots. is uh, Carla's email. Carla Carvalho. C card value at AFS.CR, and then that is the emergency phone. Dialing from Costa Rica, dialing from the US. So to program this in your phone, you need to have all these numbers, the 011 on. Um, make sure that you, when you put us in your contacts, you put it under E for emergency. When the students put it under AIFS emergency, we're the first in their contact list and we get butt dialed in the middle of the night all the time. And it's fine, but when you're an emergency phone and you get butt dialed and you can't, it, it's an awful feeling thinking that the student is in real peril, but you're just being butt dialed. So please put us under E for emergency and dial us if you need us. Okay, and uh, our staff always says, don't post on Facebook if you have a real emergency because it's not going to wake anybody up, all right? And don't text us for a real emergency because a little beep never wakes me up in the middle of the night. Any other questions before we uh, call it quits here? Yes. Just email Carla if we want to have a specific question. Absolutely. Okay. But mutually, if that's okay, because that, you know, yeah. it's practice. Okay. Okay. So both you email and request from All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a great holiday. Happy New Year. Thank you very much.